Hello everyone, this is Loco S, and welcome to another DCS video covering uh, the mission editor and how to set up different things within it. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, SAM systems and air defense units. Uh, this is kind of, I want to put this in its own top video because there's a kind of uh, a couple of very specific points that uh, should be made about these uh, set them up because as an air combat flight simulator, uh, having things on the ground shoot back at you is part of the challenge of flying in a combat situation. So, so let's get to some general uh, points of note. Uh, let's go over AI quickly because there's actually not a whole lot of new stuff here that we haven't covered before in some area. Um, just some points that are worth, uh, worth going over again real quickly. Uh, underneath uh, advanced waypoint actions for tasks, um, Pirate Point, uh, this is how you get uh, AAA units uh, to set up uh, flak barrages. Uh, this is the SAM site I created. I'll go over this in a little bit. Uh, but SAM sites really can't do this too well. Uh, it's not really their point. Uh, but you can set up a, for instance, a set of a whole bunch of AAA to fire at a point in the sky. So we can set up a AAA battery to fire within a certain uh, zone radius at a certain um, altitude. And you can kind of have sort of a, the flak, you can have basically a flak barrage set up, or you can do something like, if you want to try to create a cinematic that's like, a, I think it's like uh, both of the Gulf, uh, like in the Gulf War, uh, both of the Gulf Wars really, uh, that you have those like iconic scenes of AAA just blindly, just blasting into the sky, just tr tracers everywhere. Uh, you can also do that. I also kind of set up uh, situations like that. Uh, this is how you do it. Um, you know, it's partially for cinematics, but also partially it's a good way to get uh, to AAA to definitely pose a threat without active, uh, without actually trying to be uh, super accurate in killing the your players or yourself in the mission. It's it's still definitely a threat. Uh, it's something you can't ignore, but on the other hand, it's something that uh, again is still not gonna. It's not horrendously dangerous if your players are smart enough and they fly well. Uh, attack group and attack unit doesn't apply to air defense units really. Uh, this is mainly to get triple uh this mainly to get triple A to attack ground targets. Uh, that is something that they are more than capable of doing. Uh, there have been plenty of times while playing combined arms on the Georgia at War server for instance where a Shilka just came in and wrecked my uh, Humvee with a tow launcher in it. Uh, Plus, historically speaking, uh, the German 88mm guns were also very famously used in the air-to-ground role as a tank killer, uh, in addition to being a air-to-air, -air, uh, air, uh, sorry, a ground-to-air flak battery. So, this is something that is, uh, that is uh, again, it's, it makes sense in the, in the game. Uh, it also just applies to the fact that they are indeed ground units, so you have that too. Uh, you also have go to waypoint if they're mobile. You have hold and go to waypoint. Um, but a lot of your AAA, in, a lot of your big uh, air defense networks in this game for your mission making are going to be fixed. Uh, I'll go over real quick, but uh, like a convoy example uh, later on. But we'll get to that later. Start and root task. There's none. Perform command. Same as uh, just your generic commands that most other units have. Setting option, uh, rules of engagement, same as always, between weapon free, we return fire, and weapon hold. But for really for uh, air defense units, you want to use the alarm state. Uh, this will be more reliable. Uh, you have auto. Auto, uh, like I mentioned before, the automatic state is uh, you turn green until they detect uh, enemies incoming, and then they'll switch to the red state. Uh, this basically allows you to force the state between just stay in the green state no matter what, or stay in the red state no matter what. Uh, you can set these up underneath triggered actions, uh, with like with all your other options, and you can kind of use this to basically program the enemy to uh, switch between alarm states. Uh, fun example I had just thought of uh, was you can have uh, mission start, your SAM and AAA sites are all green, say over here. There's a bombing target, say on this side of the island, and it, uh, you, your player flies over the sites when they're green, so they don't really notice them. Does their mission. 
as soon as the bomb hits in these mission, uh, as soon as they start attacking this mission objective over here, they all turn red. So when the uh, when the player flies back over, they have to fly through basically a triple A and Samnet. You could do fun things like that um, with alarm state. Other than that, go over here. Uh, engage air weapons. This is basically allowing certain uh, SAM systems to engage air launch weapons like harpoons. Uh, although, in the, although not really against land targets. Against land targets, you'd be probably uh, you'd be firing against things like harms and uh, slammed uh, slams and uh, JSALs. Interception range. This is a pretty cool th uh, thing to also play around with. Uh, you can set it so that it only fires in a certain percentage of its max range. This is useful if you want to basically. This is useful if you want to control the engagement range. So if you kind of want to create, a, if you want to have a dense network, but you want to create openings, you can have the range um, set to like say eighty percent. So it gives the players a little bit more wiggle room to like navigate between sites. But you can also use it for the added effect that when they do engage. They're engaging at 80% of their max range, meaning the missile will have more energy and will reach the target sooner. So it makes it a bit more of a challenge that when they do engage, the player has to act more aggressively to defeat a missile that's closer in. And restrict targets. This is mostly for, uh, it also works, applies to all ground units in general. You could tell, uh, for instance, AAA, a heavy AAA to engage ground units only as an anti-tank gun, for instance. You could tell them to engage, like, don't worry about anything on the ground, only engage air targets. That's a thing that they can do. Now, I want to. Uh, now, the main reason why I wanted to make this video was to point out something very important about uh, SAM sites in particular. SAM sites require multiple different kinds of units in order to work. Uh, now, obviously, if it's an IR SAM site, you only need just the launcher because the, uh, the seeker is in the missile. And it doesn't, and it just, and all that seeker needs is the IR signature of your. Uh, of an enemy aircraft to fly by, it picks up the IR signature and fires. For your longer range SAMs, and what you normally would think of as a SAM, as a SAM, uh, you need a radar lock from the uh, from actual radar equipment to get a lock on, and then the missile can fire. So, um, using an SA2 battery as an example, uh, what are, now the only you really only need the track radar and the launchers in order to uh, have. The missile, the site operate. The track radar is what's going to basically feed the uh, the track uh, is basically going to feed the targeting information to the missile and allow the missile to track onto the target. And you need the launchers to actually launch the missiles. So this is uh, something that's not uh, that's uh, as, that's something that seems obvious, but once you go into seed work, it becomes really clear why, uh, what becomes your priority. Uh, obviously, if you're doing seed work, your priority is going to take out the track radar and then um, launcher secondary. Uh, search radars do provide uh, functionality, though. Uh, they basically give early warning to the, uh, the, the SAM site to basically to get it to switch from green to red state earlier. Um, the SA-2 site also has this optional unit, uh, the RD-75 uh, unit here. I haven't played around with this too much, but it is an optional unit that I believe that also acts as a track radar for your SAM site. Also to keep in note, uh, different launchers have different uh, ammunition counts. Uh, these SA-2 guidelines only have one launcher per uh, missiles, only, only one missile per launcher. So you definitely want to, for uh, sites, keep in mind how many missiles the site has. Uh, it's kind of pointless to set up one launcher with one missile for a SAM site. Uh, you definitely want to at least have a several. And then you can also include a resupply truck. And I'll go over this uh, when I talk about ground units uh, as well. But ground units like this unarmored truck that are... So that, which are found underneath the support and uh, logistics category, by the way. Uh, these within this black ra uh, radius actually resupply all the units with ammunition. So these five launchers, once they're done firing, uh, this truck will actually be able to supply these launchers with missiles to restock and reload another missile round. So... That is something that uh, is useful for a lot of uh, long-range SAM sites, especially if there's only a few launchers. Uh, 
that way you can keep them in the fight a little bit longer and they're not quite as a pushover of a threat whereas you drain uh they waste five missiles and then they're done uh it also will resupply this truck even though it's not part of that group will also end up resupplying these uh triple a guns with uh shells also uh if you place a sam site within a airport uh airports also i don't know if you can see it let's see if we can switch out some of the map layers here Oh, well, um, let's see here if I can get this to show a little bit easier. Okay, so I can show a little bit easier here. Um, so like Rota, in Rota International, for instance, here, there's a radius around this airport that also provides a resupply function. So if you want to have, uh, if you want to have SAM sites near an airbase, uh, that's a good option because you can then have the airbase replenish uh, the say you can replenish the missiles and the your ground units uh, ammunition around an airport like this. So let's go ahead and turn everything back on. So that's uh resupplying your SAM sites. Uh, you can place SAM sites uh in anywhere. By the way, uh, uh, it's just one of those uh, things where you want to keep them. Several things you want to keep in mind is that. If you place them in the middle of a valley, the terrain will block them. So placing them uh, in areas where terrain isn't going to block them too much is a good idea. Uh, also, you want to layer your air defenses. So you want to have, uh, for instance, a, you can have a SA-2 site by itself, but nearby you can have this. Uh, it's a little bit, you don't have to have them this close, but in general, within reasonable distance, you can have a, a AAA site protecting that SA-2 site from further air attack. And you want to basically create layers of air defense that way. It's a fairly realistic and also provides a really good amount of challenge to players because then that way they're not just all entirely, um, they're not facing one system. They have to face multiple different kinds of systems. And also in general, keep in mind uh, for balance purposes in game, uh, you don't want to have too modern of an aircraft going too old of a, up, up against too old of a SAM system. Uh, if you want to give your player some challenge, you can have newer aircraft going up against older systems uh, for fun for fun, or basically for like a late challenge. Um, but you definitely don't want to have newer uh, systems going up against older aircraft um, just because it's a, sometimes it can get a little unfair. And especially if you're trying to do seed work, you don't want like a, a for instance, an S300, an S300 to try to fight up against a uh, Skyhawk as part of a quote unquote normal or an easy challenge. You want you want to you want to balance out your challenges based on like the age of the system versus the age of the aircraft and its uh, defensive capabilities. But of course, uh, if you want to set up interesting challenges, go for it. That's where the, that's where the fun comes in. Uh, other things to note: uh, uh, you want to pay close attention to detection and engagement ranges for SAM sites. Uh, yellow is your detection range, so this is the SA2's detection range, and then the red circle is the SA2's engagement range. Other than that, uh, the only other thing I could possibly think of of note is you could also, in convoys, embed AAA units and uh, mobile SAM sites. So for this convoy down here that I made, uh, I have a Land Rover, I have this truck, and then a fairly common AAA unit that you can easily uh, put into any uh, like Red 4 unit is this uh, ZU-23 with on the mounted on a truck. And you can have, and this is a good option if you want to have... Um, your convoys be at least have some protection against air-to-air -air units. Uh, most unit, most uh, ground units in game, if they have a machine gun on them, will use it for um, self-defense against air targets uh, that come at them. But they're not going to be super effective. Uh, but you can always usually put in one or two uh, of these, uh, basically mobile AAA units, and they'll actually protect the aircraft while the convoy is in motion. Uh, you could also set up uh, some mobile SAMs that are IR based. Uh, there's another good option for giving convoys a little bit more uh, protect uh, teeth to protect themselves. Uh, it's an option. It's something you can easily do. 
And other than that, that's pretty much it for air defenses in DCS world. Uh, short video, but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, you're gonna. There's a lot of like minutia to this to setting up air defenses. There's a lot of fun in it. Uh, layer your units, have them overlap. Uh, definitely um, mine the terrain. Uh, but also, uh, definitely for don't don't go overkill on air defenses as well. If you're trying to make sure that your players can actually get to do the mission that you want them to do, uh, that is something that sometimes it's a little easy to do. Uh, have too many SAM sites, too many too much AAA around the target. Uh, you don't have to necessarily have the AAA around your target. You can have the AAA on the way to the target. So, with that being said, this is Laco S. I'm going to sign out. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to cover. Uh, ground unit AI, and that should wrap up all the different kinds of units and their def, uh, their def, uh, how they work in DCS. Till then, see you later.